Hello, we're going to continue uh, looking for some of the most powerful function in Excel. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about VLOOKUP. Uh, we're going to be talking now about actually a horizontal lookup. Horizontal lookup, uh, let me go ahead and take that out first of all. I wanted to be able to clear this. And if you wanted to clear a lot of things, actually, you can select the whole area and go to clear, clear all because you don't want anything. Also, I need to change the view in order to zoom it maybe to 150% uh, would be good uh, in order to assist you or make it clearer for you. It's actually 159, no big deal. The work area is basically here, which has already been stated as a vertical less. How could I turn something vertical uh, uh, into horizontal? Mm, nothing to it. I could go ahead and copy this. I could go ahead and actually I'm too close to my uh, keyboard and my mouse. I'm going to say control C. And when I'm trying to uh, uh, paste that, I'm going to paste it right here. When I'm trying to paste this, I'm going to go to the paste special. There we go. And I'm going to actually transpose my page. So look now, the ID in the brain in the products is not anymore in the uh, header of the column. It's rather in the row, in the row. So now I'm turning my criteria into an age lookup. You could choose either one of them. I mean, it doesn't matter, but just for the sake of covering everything, I need you to be able to also see how to do the H lookup, horizontal lookup, where the criteria is listed horizontally. Why is that? Because you might be able to really uh, deal with that in the real world, where your boss or uh, your colleague uh, at work or coworker already traditionally or culturally and from an organizational point of view, uh, is really like that. They're used to uh, doing things in a horizontal uh, uh, style. So we're going to go ahead and see how we're going to do this from a horizontal point of view. Uh, of course, uh, I'm going to be looking for the uh, part ID by the value in uh, 104. If you look here in the criteria 104, it's going to be made by or the brand HP and of course the product is going to be printer. So instead of using VLOOKUP like we did in the previous video, we're going to use HLOOKUP. Okay? And exactly the same thing, we're going to look for the criteria, you're going to include the range, okay, not the title, only the range, which is here three rows, not three columns, the three rows. The first one is going to be the criteria. And the second is going to be the brand, and the third is going to be uh, the products. When I'm talking about the criteria, everything is really criteria. Uh, the first one is going to tell me which values 101, uh, or in this case 104, and what is the brand for uh, 104 uh, part, and what type of uh, product is that. So when we go here, after we selected this, immediately hit F or to lock the whole range of the criteria. Of course, we're going to get the second row, in this case, row index member, and if we're going to also get an exact match, not an approximate match, because a part number or an ID, just like your social security number, is going to be very unique. And here we go, we ended up having the HP, since we locked our range, uh, we're going to be able to use that safely without having to worry about uh, the rest. Of course, I did a mistake, so I had to escape to un uh, undo what I did, and here we go. The same thing, we could do that very easily for the products. Uh, actually, this is supposed to be the brand, not the products, and that here was going to be the products. Oh. You know, here is the products, or the name of the products. We, we're going to do each lookup, okay, and it's going to be based on that value, and we're going to put a comma to separate that part of the function, really to separate what we call the parameters. Parameters, uh, the first parameter is the ID, the second parameter is the whole range in a horizontal format, and hit F4, put another comma, which is going to tell me what row you want it to include or show as a result is row 3, which is the product name. In this case, it's going to be a printer. 
and we need to get an exact match, an exact match, and here we go. An exact match, and notice we have the point guard here. Exactly the same thing when you get like a very large criteria here, except in this criteria here, we're going to go ahead and turn it into an actual horizontal uh, layout or uh, format. Uh, it's no big deal. We could go ahead and remind ourselves how to do this. Copy, paste that. This is going to be an awkward list of 21 criteria horizontally. Usually, uh, you know, if that's the case, no big deal. At least you know that we could transpose that using the paste special and look how big it is. Of course, we could click on any one of those in order, or actually select that first before we do the clicking, as we know. Uh, select from the top, then you will see how this is a long range, a long range of criteria. Very powerful stuff. Uh, now we, by this, we covered a VLOOKUP in the previous video. We started here each lookup. We're going to really look at match, which is also one of the most powerful functions in Excel, but it doesn't really give us so much by itself. It's just like powerful, but fully meaningful when we use it with the all in, uh, in conjunction with the index function. But let's go ahead and see how it works first by itself before I combine that with the index to uh, get the best out of it. Match function. Here I have actually four different list of colors. And I'm looking here for the yellow to see which one is this actually in the order of the list. So let me go ahead and delete that and start from scratch. It would be very helpful also if I could make that uh, view 200% very quickly. Since I don't have a lot of data, it makes it much easier for you to see. So if I wanted to go ahead and say match, and match is what? This is the lookup value. I wanted to see which order of these array, meaning array is multiple value. I'm going to look for the word yellow. And it's going to actually another comma. It says, do I need to get an exact match? Yes, it's an exact match because in this case, it's yellow as a word, so I'm not comparing yellow. I need the yellow, and it's not there is a range of values in this case. So we need to go ahead and get that. It's number three. It's number three. One for the green, two for the blue, yellow is three, and white is four. If I change this to white, and we could easily do that, it's going to change number four. Match is really good to tell you where is that uh, piece of data is located. Not only in a row or columns you will see in my follow-up example, it's going to be actually anywhere within, uh, we could do it actually anywhere in a matrix, but let's take it easy first before we make things a uh, more more involved. Matrix is two-dimensional way, meaning the rows and columns like a table. Uh, index uh, very, very powerful function. It will tell you, here we go. If we take a look at the index here, in this one here, I'm looking at E4 through F7. That's me. Let me go ahead and take that away from you. And also zoom. Of course, in order to zoom, I have to really show you 200%. It's better. So what are we going to be looking here? This is my criteria. Okay, And it now happens to be what? Happens to be E4 through F4, so this is a matrix. This is actually a matrix, uh, meaning two dimensions, A4 through F4. What I'm looking for here, I'm looking for E2, A2, okay, and comma B2. So when I click enter, it tells me where, it tells me where I got actually the 97, which is a third row, third row, and what, here we go, we got to go ahead and see, look here, third, it's, it's going to be A1, which is the third uh, row, and we're going to go to B2, B2, which is the value of uh, the column in this case, look what we get here, we get the value 92. So this is actually one row, second row, and three row, and actually this is the third row, and the second uh, value in the row is going to give me 92. Similar, if I go ahead and say only, only, 
E4 through E, uh, the criteria is E4 through E7, which is going to cover only that row, actually, only the column, sorry, this column, and it's going to give me only one piece of data. So it worked with one row or column, and it worked with double, uh, with multiple rows and multiple columns. So this is very powerful stuff. Let's go ahead and actually get a practical example uh, in relation to ma match match and index. Let's assume that I have a, I'm looking for uh, the prices in three different stores. Uh, those stores are Walmart, I'm making it up as you speak, uh, HPP, okay, and let's say here next to us here, Dollar uh, General. And I'm a very bad speller, so I'm going to go ahead and hit F7 to make sure that everything is uh, I'm going to leave that HTTP is the right one, so ignore that. And check spelling. And look here, I'm going to look for the items that I'm looking for. I say here, tooth, paste. And I have here like pens, and I use the same example almost. And I have here like notebook. Okay? So in Walmart, let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. In Walmart, they have that $3, in HP it's $2.19. And Dollar General is a three point one fifteen cents. Okay, in pins, um, it's one dollar twenty nine cents in Walmart, and in HP is a two dollars eleven cents, and Dollar General is one dollar. And in notebook, uh, it's four dollar in Walmart, uh, five dollar seventy five. The same notebook in HP and in Dollar General is four point five. Of course, this is a dollar figure, so I'm going to go ahead and make it into uh, money figures. And I'm going to go ahead and also enlarge this. And I want to get the best, best price. Best price. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, what is the best price when I have the three items of the same exact brand? The best price is the minimum price. The worst price is going to be the max price or maximum price. So this is obviously this is the best price for which is don't actually limit your view to what you see. Let's imagine you have hundreds of, of items and hundreds of stores. And you could see easily that we figure that out based on the calculation. Of course now you could tell me Dollar General has had the best price and you have uh, Walmart and this is actually HEB based on the limited number of data that we use in this example. But ignore the fact that I could look at it and tell. I wanted to see where is the 2.90 is located. So we could use actually the match as uh, a uh, match function. Actually, let's go ahead and see uh, where is the location of that item within the row, within these pieces of data. Because I want to prepare that for index to consume that value. So it will tell me which uh, business is going to be really having the best price. And if I do actually look at this from a practical point of view, if you have like really hundreds of items that you want to contact the vendors, and you need to just decide which one of these vendors to be calling once you figure out the best price. In a very, very large table, you need to be able to tell here the name of the, the, name of the uh, vendors. So I'm going to go ahead and say here vendor, or actually, first of all, let's go ahead and use location, location, and later is the vendor. And later, actually, I could combine both match and index together. So the location is going to be match. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, match what? Match the best price to the whole range of data, whether I have three or 300. And I don't want to lock it because every row is actually changes with me. So I have to leave it alone. And it tells me, do you want the exact match or less than or greater than? I need the exact match because I already figure out what is the best price based on the minimum function or by using the minimum function. And it tells me that it's the location for that is number two. And right away, I can drag this to tell me where it's located. For example, uh, match function is going to be very powerful 
in order to tell me uh, where is the best price in case I change the value or the value change. Like before you order something, uh, the person who is responsible for the price said, wait a second, they just announced there is a sale and the price is a change. It's going to change, of course, the location of that uh, data. And of course, it's going to change the vendor as a result later. So if I change that to 2.8, which means it's going to be listed, this price is going to change the location into three. So how are we going to figure out what is the name of the vendor in order to call that vendor or do the purchase from that vendor? It's going to be an index function, and the index function use, uses that match function to figure out the name of the uh, vendor, or the name of the business, or the name in this case of the uh, store. So in this case, I'm going to be looking at all these different values again, and I'm going to lock it up since the name of the store is going to be used repeatedly. It's a fixed location, and it's going to ask me what is the row number. If there's a column number, also we can get it. I only have a row number, and of course we want it to go ahead and close it. Just the row number. There is no need anything here. See. Of course, I could close the whole thing. And where is the row number coming? It's from I can. And notice here, I get the Dollar General. I can go ahead and drag this. It's Walmart, and I could play with it to convince you that if I change that to 3.1.10, it's going to change that to HP. See that? Uh, and of course, it, you, I told you already that I could combine both functions together. So I start with index. Index is going to be pertaining to these three. Okay, lock it because it's going to be repeated. And the match function that returned the two, instead of actually do it separately, I'm going to put the match function directly here. And it's going to look for the best price here, uh, comma, to give the criteria for the match as I did. And another comma to give me the exact price, which is zero. I need another parenthesis to close the whole thing. And notice that I got HP, HEP for the first uh, toothpaste, and the pins are going to be the best in Dollar General, and the notebook is going to be the best at Walmart. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will practice this, and I hope you will take those uh, to heart and mind, because those are going to save you a lot, a lot of hours if you really need to do this computation in the real world. Thank you for watching. I really enjoy doing these um, enjoy enjoy doing these videos, and I hope you will enjoy uh, practice with them as much. See you in the next video.